happens a lot more frequently than we want to ever talk about. Uh, people get into kind of a relationship with each other, and then once they learn about the other person deep down, hmm, it's not quite so good. And that's what's going to happen to the United States and the Soviet Union. Okay, After World War II is over, things are going to get really ugly between them fast. Right? The United States and the Soviet Union worked together during the war. But there's going to be a lot of reasons they don't trust each other after the war. And so that's the first thing we're going to do. Look, after the war's over, we get kind of like this Rocky Balboa, Ivan Drago type of vibe. And they both have some complaints. So we're going to make a list of complaints that each country had about the other. America, they had some complaints about Russia. Hmm. Sir. Oh, good one there. They started with that one. It wasn't just starving them to death, but what they do to them? What is it? Uh, what we call that time period where Stalin was the Great Purge. Okay. So one of the complaints America had was the Great Purge, Stalin killing people. Just put Stalin kills up there. All right. Stalin, remember, had gotten rid of anybody that he considered a threat. They just disappear, and people never hear from them again. So America's like, hey, Russia, you know, we were together during World War II, but now that it's over, uh, we really didn't like what you did with those purges. That, that actually was kind of disastrous. What else would America complain about? Something in Russia's history or their past. So not you, somebody else. Something that Russia had done that America would be concerned about. What is it? Why would they be concerned about that? You're really close with this one. All right? And it's not that necessarily the revolution that caused them a problem. Remember, what type of revolution? Who took over? The Bolsheviks. And they preached what type of governmental economic style? Communism. Okay? And so America was afraid because one of the goals of communism is a worldwide spread. Worldwide spread. Of communism. They're like, hey, Russia. You're always trying to spread your communism around to everybody else. We don't like you Russians. Spreading your communism, great purge. What else did Russia do in its history there, in the Soviet Union's history, that would get on America's nerves or cause America not to trust them? Not you. I'm going to get somebody else here. What did they do right before World War II that everybody was a little bit surprised about? The non-aggression pact with Germany. The deal with Germany. They're like, oh, you had a pact with Hitler, the one guy on the planet that everybody knew not to trust, and you trusted him. What kind of idiot does that? That's really not a wise decision. Ooh, look, we love to hold grudges against people. What else has Russia done in the past that where America would have been like, that's not cool, I don't trust you? Go back to World War I. What did they do? What did Russia do during World War I that really got on everybody's nerves? Not yet, not in then. Not in the World War I era. Uh, they, not just they helped escalate it, but even when the war happened, what did Russia do? Did they stick around for the whole thing? No, they left early. Okay, And America's like, you guys can't be trusted. You left World War I early. You left World War I early. Hmm. Let's go over to the other side for a minute, talk about Russia, because they got some complaints about us. After the war's over, Russia says, hey, there's some things that concern us about the United States. What do they not like about America, Toby? What is it? 
be more specific. Atomic bombs, that scares the crap out of them. They're like, hey, we were your ally, and we see you have these bombs now that are pretty powerful, and that's a little concerning for us, because what if you get angry at us and try to use them? That would be bad. What else? Somebody else. Somebody different. What's another reason that Russia would not trust the United States or be very skeptical of America? Hmm. What do you got? You know, that's not a bad guess, but that's something they didn't hold against them. I like where your head's at, though, on that. Eugenics had kind of fallen out of favor by that point. What do we know about America? They're capitalists, okay? And why is Russia going to be critical of that? What do capitalists always care about? Money. They think capitalists are greedy. They want land and money. They're like, you capitalist, imperialist dogs, all you care about is money. You don't care about people. You just care about profit. They claim to. Hmm. What else? What's something that America... How about this? Look at World War II. When does America get involved in World War II? 1941, and when did World War II start? 1939. They're like, hey, America, you guys were slow to get in the war. True that. Right? They're slow to get in the war. They're like, hey, we got plenty of reasons not to trust you. Yes. Yeah, you could kind of go along with that, because remember, America's position is neutral at first, and there's a lot of people who are isolationists. In fact, you could say that other nations might get mad at the United States, including Russia, saying, you guys tried to pretend that you were in, like on this little island of peace and happiness, and you just tried to pretend that the rest of the world didn't exist. You could have done something, and you didn't do it. Right? America was just sitting on the sidelines. What else is something that Russia would hold against the United States? Hmm. Or vice versa. What else can we add to the list on either side? What do you got, Toby? Uh, All right. That they don't treat their people fairly. There's no freedoms. Lack of fundamental freedom. Communist society has a lack of freedom. By the way, would Russia make a similar allegation to the United States? Why would Russia try to say they're more about equality than the United States is? Who does America not treat equally? What is it? Not about social class. Black people, okay? They're like, hey, America has a racist twinge to them. They would be like, hey, here in the Soviet Union, we're not racist. We're not even sexist. Men and women, they all work. These two groups don't trust each other, all right? And here's the worst part. After the war's over, these are the two most powerful countries that are left, okay? And so they both have some complaints about the other side, and they're concerned. They're like, I don't know if I can trust you guys. And they have to try to figure out what the world's going to look like now that the Nazis and the Japanese have been defeated, all right? And you got two groups that don't trust each other. How easy do you think it's going to be for them to make agreements about anything? Not very, okay? Now, they don't trust each other. There's a lot of bad blood between them. And between that, they also have to make some decisions about the world. One of the things they have to decide, what are we going to do with the German land, okay? And here's what they decide. They carve up Germany into four zones. 
Four zones. Britain, France, America, Russia all get a zone. Sir. Everybody gets a zone. Britain, France, America, Russia all get a zone of Germany. And they said, look, until we can figure out permanently what to do with Germany, we're going to temporarily divide it up. Right? France's little section looks like a bow tie. America's here, the little gold section, and British section's up there. Russia's section is all red. Now, in here, this is the capital city of Berlin. And they said, look, it's not fair that Russia gets the entire capital city of Berlin. So they divided Berlin up into four sections. Aha. Huh. Now, these four sections here, obviously you've got countries that think alike because France, Britain, and the United States are all democracies. They're all capitalist nations. Russia, on the other hand, is a communist nation. Right? They're going to have a hard time agreeing about what to do. Right? And initially what they wanted to do was at some point they said we need to reunify Germany and let them be an independent nation again. Okay? But because of all the disagreements and distrust, that's not going to happen. All right? And so what happens a few years after the war is over is two independent nations are established. You had West Germany and East Germany. America, Britain, and France combined their zones into West Germany as an independent nation. And Russia, they say, well, our zone's going to be an independent nation as well. We're going to call it East Germany. Wow, very original with the names. I know. Now, West Germany, what type of government do you think they ran there? The democracy, a capitalist democracy. And what's East Germany going to be? It's going to be communist. How about that? All right. Fun fact, Germany is going to take nearly four decades. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's going to take nearly four decades before these countries get to be reunited. Four decades where they're going to be separated as communist and capitalist societies. Uh, by the way, which one do you think did better uh, in terms of their economy and their ways of life. It's West Germany. You're going to find West Germany is going to be much better off than East Germany. All right? So America and Russia were like, hey, we divide up Germany, and eventually it's going to be two different nations. They also had to figure out what to do with Korea. Okay? Here in the Asian world, remember, Japan had a huge control over this region, and America took Japan. We're like, we're in charge of that. But the Russian army had come down a little bit here, and so America and Russia divide up Korea into two halves. South Korea, free and democratic, capitalist. North Korea, communist. They're still divided today. Which one do you think has prospered? Definitely South Korea, the capitalist society. South Korea is actually a pretty highly technological advanced uh, democracy. Whereas North Korea, a communist government run by a dictator, Kim Jong-un, uh, they're very backward. They have trouble feeding their people. Uh, they also have concentration camps with forced labor. Yikes. Some things don't change. So we had to divide up Germany. We had to divide up Korea. What else can we do, deal with here after the war's over? Right? America and Russia said, we also need to create an international peacekeeping organization. Okay? And the United States kind of insisted, they told Russia, look, you, you really need to go along with this. Okay? To prevent some large-scale conflict, conflict from happening again, we established what we call the United Nations. Aw. It was kind of like what the League of Nations was supposed to be after World War I, but the United Nations actually had the support of the United States. So the United States and the Soviet Union are behind it, and so everybody else jumps on board too. Okay. Uh, by the way, where's the United Nations headquarters? Not you. What's the most important city in the world, man? What is it? New York City. Fantastic. 
look, it's easy to argue between Tokyo, London, and New York City. Those are the most important cities in the world, right? Anybody wants to disagree, that's fine. But New York City is the headquarters of the United Nations. And so we're like, hey, maybe we can resolve our disputes there instead of killing 60 million people. Maybe that'd be preferable, All right? So look, man, the war's over. America, Russia, we don't trust each other, but we're the two strongest nations left, and we've got to figure out what to do with the world now. Hmm. Oh, the United Nations is still around trying to solve problems. Okay? Now, here's what happens, though. Even though we're dividing up the world, all right, there's some issues that develop. And one of the biggest issues is what we call the Cold War. Right? And no, it has nothing to do with the weather. Okay? A Cold War. You've probably heard that expression before, uh, but you may not necessarily know what that means. Uh, anybody got a good working definition for a Cold War? Not you. What do you got, Kayla? Pretty close. That's very close. A Cold War is when you're not actually fighting each other, but you try to block the other side's goals and objectives. You try to prevent them from getting anything done that they want to get accomplished. Or you guys would call it being petty. All right? But think about this for a second, too. Um, are there anybody, like anybody at the school that you're like, you would consider maybe like a rival or someone that you don't like a lot? Oh, yeah. Oh, and you got somebody? Are there people that sometimes you would want to punch in the face, but you don't punch them in the face? Why? There's consequences, aren't there? All right? And you don't want to deal with the consequences of that. However, if you had a chance to one-up them or embarrass them in front of other people, Owens, would you take the opportunity to do that? Heck, yeah. And so that's what America and Russia are in in the Cold War. If they get a chance to one-up the other side or to embarrass them or to make them look bad in any capacity, that's part of being a Cold War. We're not in the mood to really kill each other, but we definitely want to try to make the other side look embarrassed. And you're right, Kayla, in that they are ready to fight if that's the case. Okay? Uh, so you try to embarrass them or you try to, as you kids would say, flex on them a little bit. All right? What, Lost? Is that too much? I'm trying to speak in your language, okay? Your comments are a little sus. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, okay? Now, America, in order to prevent uh, Russia from ever really getting to, uh, uh, to achieve some of its goals, America said, what can we do to really cause Russia some problems? And they said, you know what? We want to make sure that they don't spread communism anywhere else, okay? And so America enacts a policy called containment. And America said, here's how we're going to deal with communism from the Soviet Union. We're just going to contain it. We're going to stop it from spreading. Because you can't get rid of, you can't make the Russians stop being communist. That's not going to happen. Not overnight anyway. So what we've got to do is prevent communism from spreading. How do we do that? It's like COVID. Yeah. Uh, we have to prevent it from spreading, so we're all going to wear masks and socially distance. Except no. All right? America's official policy is what we call containment. If communism tries to spread to Africa, we're going to Africa. Communism tries to spread to Greece, we're going to Greece. Communism tries to spread to uh, Brazil, that's where we're going, to Brazil. All right? That's what we do. We contain it. Okay? And... Look, that can be super annoying for the Russians, too. Now, here's the thing, though. If America says we're going to keep communism from spreading, or if I say something to the effect of, hey, I'm going to keep you guys from doing X, Y, or Z, what do you always want to try to do? You want to try and do it anyway just to see what kind of response you're going to get. All right? And we'll pick up with that tomorrow and tell you how America is going to contain communism.